However, there could be a certain scenario where we have alternative units of measure and we want to store different prices depending on the unit of measure we set. So let me give you an example. Let's go to transaction ME21N and let me just default a couple of values. So we have our vendor, then the purchase organization, purchase group and company code as always. And then our material, our test material. Let me just quickly insert the plant. And as you've seen in my video about the purchase info record, the net price is derived automatically. Here you can see we have to order unit pieces. And what we want to achieve is the following, that for instance, for an alternative unit of measure for this material, which would be kilogram, or also maybe a bag or something like that, we want the price here to be reflected accordingly and change. So for instance, we could say that per kilogram, we want a net price of 120 instead of 100. And let me now show you how we can achieve this. So first of all, we navigate to the transaction code slash N MM02 and we insert our material and click enter on our keyboard. Then we navigate to the purchasing tab and set you continue. The plant is 0001 in my example. And over here, you can see the field called variable purchase order unit. Right now, it is inactive. You can see we have three indicators over here, not active, active, and active with own price. We will set it to active with own price. This will allow us to use different prices for different order units. I hit enter on my keyboard to store the value. Afterwards, we navigate over here to additional data. That's control and F6 on your keyboard. And then we navigate to the unit of measure. Right now you can see we only have pieces over here, but what we will do for our showcase is we will create a new alternative unit of measure. So our denominator is one. The denominator itself specifies the ratio between our alternative unit of measure and our base unit of measure, which is pieces in this case. So let's take the alternative unit of measure kilogram, which will be, let's say, five pieces. And then we can save our material. Then there is a technical requirement to use this facility. We need to make sure that the so-called access sequence will have the right condition tables. So therefore we navigate to the transaction code slash n m slash zero seven. And then all we need to do is click here on the gross price and then on accesses over here. And we can see that the tables, let me just enhance the view here, the table is 066 for info record per order unit and 067 for plant info record per order unit are indeed in our sequence. This is SAP standard. This is just important if you created own access sequences that you make sure that those are here included. Otherwise, what we are about to do won't work. Then we will navigate to our info record via slash NME11. And I will just quickly go through this because we have already seen this in my other video. So for this supplier, the material purchase organization and plant combination and the info category standard, I press enter. And we can see the variable order unit has been copied successfully from the material master for the material 661. So now the next step would be to navigate to the purchase organization data one, just fill the plant delivery time and standard quantity as they are mandatory. And then we have here the conditions tab. So now it's getting interesting. First of all, we will now here include our net price for kilogram, which would be 100, let's say. Press enter on our keyboard. And then we press on the conditions tab over here. So now you can see we have now two units of measure because we define those, the alternative unit of measure in our material master. And this time I will select pieces. And for pieces, I will include an amount of, let's say 120, for instance. So a deviating amount. And then I can save this purchasing info record. 
Now let's test our scenario. We navigate to transaction NME21N, that's slash NME21N again. Insert our supplier, then the purchase org group and so on. And then over here I will now insert our test material 661 and I will include the plant. And you can see the net price of 100 per kilogram has been derived successfully. Now let's change the order unit to pieces. And you can see the net price is now adjusted to 120. So with that we can have a flexible net price depending on the order unit whether it's pieces, kilograms and so on.